Hey everyone, welcome back to another Fortnite Save the World video. In this video, I will show you a new build for Bridge Amplifier, for Twine Peaks Endurance. With all the latest edits and updates. The build looks a bit similar to the old build. But I wanted to add everything in one video, the build plus the edits, the old and the new ones. Before we start, make sure to read the description first, if there is any update for this build or a newer build, I will leave it there. Sorry for delaying this video, the build was already done, but I had to change and test a new loop bridge because of the latest bug. Where many bosses may destroy the floor connecting the bridge. Also, the massive meteor during waves 20 and wave May 30th require more of bigger baits, two structures can't stop it now. I will explain that during the video. And without further ado, let's get started. For bridge amplifier, they spawn in these locations. And the husk have two straight ways to reach the amplifier. I will block this one, and half of this one. A few husks will go from here. And the rest will follow this path. I will build the main tunnel here, using recycle traps, to push them into the lava. So I will block this way too. Flingers, lobbers, and some husks will try to go around from here, to reach the amp from behind. from here too. So I will block these ways too, to force all of them to follow the main tunnel. Now let's start with the block offs. To avoid any confusion, let's call this build, Bridge Amplifier 2023 Build 1. Start from here. And don't worry, if you got confused, I will jump every few steps to show you the build progress. Make sure to use metal for every single piece, because the Space Rocks modifier hits this amp twice, during wave 20 and wave 30. For any reason, if you needed more block offs here, here's how to place them. Add it only if you need to. Here as well. You can add walls and cones behind it. But the existing block offs are already enough. The only reason you will need more block offs, is if the big meteor destroyed a block off. I will explain it later during the video. Add a wall here. To avoid any flinger moving around to reach the amplifier from behind. Keep half of it empty, to allow the husk to go up. A lot of block offs I know, but they are required, since the main tunnel is far away from the spawn.
Don't add in walls here, because the mini bosses will destroy them. You can edit this part like this if you needed more block offs. Now, for the main tunnel. Here's how it works. They will spawn here, and some of the husk will go up from here. But most of them will follow this path. And go up from here. Then, to the tunnel. It's a bit weird, since they have a shorter path here. Keeping half of this way up open plus this path, saved a lot of block offs. And most of them will just follow the long way anyway. Which is good to be honest, it will take them longer to reach the main tunnel. And you can take advantage of that if your durability is low. You can cover their path with ceiling drop traps like this. Nothing in particular, it's extra anyway. These drop traps will clear any early random waves plus it will slow down the husk a lot during wave 20 and wave 30. It's extra, so you can skip it. But for me, I keep 4 to 7 roofs. Keep it to be sure, you have a lot of extra structures anyway. Now, for the roof and the lava shield. I will use floor launchers here and edited ramps above them to push the husk to the lava. Add these floors to direct them to the lava. Now the floor launchers will be able to throw the husk to the lava. But here's the thing, mist monsters now can walk on the lava without dying. So flingers can stand here and throw husk over the amplifier. And to avoid that, I will cover all this area with a lava shield. You can cover this part, but no need. They can't target the amp from here. Add another layer here. Because sometimes a flinger stand here and throw over the amp. For any reason if a flinger managed to throw husk above all of that, add another layer. And you can expand it too if needed. I test the builds a lot before posting them don't worry. I just mentioned all these notes to help you understanding why I built it like that. And in case anything changed in the game in the future updates, you will know what to do. And sometimes these changes are huge, like the crowd control counter. Or like before, if a mini boss or a mist monster fall into the lava, they would die instantly, but now, they walk on the lava like it's a normal floor. And if there any changes needed, I will update you as soon I can don't worry. Now, for the loop bridge. 
For bridge amplifier, the loop bridge, it's a bit confusing right now. Because the massive meteor hits near the amp in multiple locations, which can destroy the bridge if you built it where it hits. And the massive meteor spawn locations may be different from base to base. But don't worry, I will explain everything as I can. Now, for the important part. Like any loop bridge we use, we will simply build it here like this. And we add the other side, as usual. Like lava amp loop bridge for example. But here is the thing. For some people, the massive meteor may hit here. And if this floor got destroyed, the whole bridge will get destroyed. So, to avoid that, we can shift it to here like this. And build the other side of the bridge as usual. But again, for some people me included, it may hit here instead. And if it did, the bridge will fall. For me, I built it right in the middle. Between the two possible spawns. This is the current loop bridge I'm using right now. And it works well as you will see during the gameplay video tomorrow, tested it a lot don't worry. Add a wall here, for wall lights trap, to push the smashers down to the lava. You can add another one here too, but no need. Because most of the time, smashers will stand here in charge on the amplifier, then walk around a bit, then charge again. And they may destroy one or two arches here, but it's okay, don't worry. Sometimes they will follow the loop bridge too. But they barely reach the amp anyway, because the traps here always push them down to the lava. And for any reason, if the big meteor hits here as you base, use the previous way I mentioned. Also, you can use the old loop bridge in the old build, like this. And continue as usual. Or you can build the bridge from here. A lot of options you can use. Sorry for taking too long, just wanted to explain every possible situation. Because the massive meteor is no joke anymore, as I will explain in a moment. But before that, here's a bonus tip to control the big meteor easily without any baits or shooting it. Because some of you may get confused about all the details I'm about to mention, but everything is easy, no need to worry. You just need to take the hit with your body, as you will see in this gameplay. If you are running ninja like me, just jump and touch the massive meteor. And if you are running constructor, just stand under it. The meteor won't be able to damage the build at all, it won't even touch it, your body will take all the hit. You see, very easy. Now let's back to the video. 
Now I will explain everything about the massive meteor. It spawns during wave 20 and wave 30, with the Space Rocks modifier. It comes from the sky from any direction. And it can hit your build, but with testing, you can know all the possible locations where it hits. And it's easy to control it with baits and shifting the builds, but that's a weird bug right now with the massive meteor. First, let me explain how the baits work. For example, if the massive meteor hits here. We add a floor to take the hit, and that's it. Sometimes we add two structures in case it hit twice in the same spot during wave 20 and wave 30. But few months ago, it was able to pass through two structures. So we started using triple structures baits. Like this. Or this. Even you can use quad bait to make sure, anything to take the hit instead of the build. But here's the thing, I saw it few times, when the massive meteor will pass through anything in its way no matter what you add, it's rare though. Like last time I saw that, was here. I had a huge bait here like this. And it destroyed it like it was no thing. Then this floor. And this floor. We are talking around 8 structures weren't able to stop it. Which doesn't make any sense, because in Canny Valley, 1 or 2 structures can stop it easily. Which is definitely a bug in Twine Peaks. Well, it's a habit now in Twine Peaks every update. Other thing I noticed. Sometimes it comes from a different direction and hit in the middle of the bait instead of the top, and it may may pass through. Here's a trick, add the bait above a wall like this. And shift it forward or backward to take the hit. I will show you the common spawns locations in my base. And as I mentioned, the spawns may be different from base to base. So, I recommend to test it few times to check if you got any rare spawns in your base, and you can add baits there easily. You know everything about baits now, and how to place the perfect one regarding your base. And anything new comes regarding the massive meteor thing, I will update in the description, and will make a video about it if needed. Here are the baits I have in my base right now. These are the spawns around the amplifier that I mentioned before. These locations too, but they are away from the build, no need to worry about them. It may hit the block offs here, so I added a bait. And you can add the extra block offs I mentioned too. If it destroyed the block off, a husk may target this block off. So add another bait here. You can shift them if the massive meteor hits in a different location in your base. This part are important, since it direct the husk pushed by the floor launchers to the lava so I covered all of it with baits. And you can combine some of the baits to a big one like this. A ramp or an edit stair is better than the wall. A bait like this can take a hit from any direction. A lot of options you can use, or you can just take the hit with your body like the bonus tip I mentioned before. I usually use triple baits, but you may need quad. I know, a lot of you are very confused right now. But believe me, it's very very easy to control the big meteor. I just added everything I noticed during 3 months of testing. So you can know and learn how to build, where and why. Now, for the traps and perks.
Now let's add the traps. Three impact, two reload floor launchers to push the husk to the lava. Use any low damage floor spikes, anything to slow them down. Focus of the direction of the gas tank of the freeze trap, to push the smashers and the husk to the lava. Don't add a wall here. Because it will block half of the tunnel and will cause a lot of issues. The freeze trap here plus the drop traps I will add later will be enough to push the husk and the smasher to the lava. Plus this extra part will help a lot, since not much husk will reach the end of the tunnel. 5 impact wall launcher to push the smashers down. And a wall light as well. Smashers won't cause issues if they reach the amp, but I just prefer to push them to the lava instead. You can add a freeze trap too, to help to push smashers and husk down, but it may cause issues for some people. So if you got any issues regarding this ramp, remove the freeze trap. No need for any traps on these four walls here. You can add wall lights or sound wall traps if you want. I will add two wall lights traps to stun the husk, they will get stunned for a moment. Till the floor launcher traps reload again and push them to the lava. It's not a big thing, but why not? Healing sound wall here to control the sploters, they won't cause issues but add it just in case. Make sure of the direction of the drop traps to push the husk back. Healing wall spikes for any husk trying to hit the block offs. Sometime a plaster stand here and keep hitting the walls if you were near the block offs. So, add a wall darts trap here if needed, if will help if your building health is low. Here too. You can add gas traps too, but no need. And of course the best way to avoid that, is to stand on the observing spot or the AFK spot. Check this video to know how and where to build the AFK spot. Now everything is done, but I like to add some of these drop traps here above the tunnel. Helps a lot to push the husk down to the lava too, if you place them right plus they have two reload perks which is very nice, only 6.5 seconds to reload. Make sure of the direction of them, to make sure they push the husk to the lava not back to the tunnel. Also, do not use in damage perks on these traps or it will cause a lot of issues with propanes. Wall lights trap here for the smashers. And the last trap is the anti-air trap. It's very important to place some, because the small space rocks will ruin everything without anti-air traps. Use some on the loop bridge. And some above the build and the block offs as well.
I haven't built the baits yet in this base, but add 5 to 7 traps above the roof or the baits, should be enough. Add 2 or 3 above the block offs here too if needed. And that's it. Don't forget to use code LARSIS in the item shop if you want to support me. I know it's a lot in one video. It was a bit challenging to add all these audio notes using with text-to-speech app. Since it takes a lot of time to write a script and match the audio with the video, but I want to explain everything I know about Twine and Endurance builds in general. Let me know in the comments what you prefer, a full detailed video like this one, or just the build. Hope you enjoyed it and as always, see you in the next one.